one frame, two frames. <laughs> Let's build some spare parts. So welcome everybody, if you're new here, I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rock Robotics and Micro Flash Delta, my three pound combat robot, which I would show you right now if all of his parts weren't scattered about and here's the empty shells of the robot. <laughs> I clearly can't show you the entire robot, which is normally sitting right here in these videos. But today what I am doing is actually taking some of the things that I showed off in a tutorial video about how you do the nice clean beetle weight frames without machine tools, link in the show notes for that one, and applying that to the rest of the robot. So this here is the prototype frame I've been using up to this point for testing the design of the robot, making modifications and whatnot. And because I'm building a combat robot, I'm actually still making modifications past the test frame for this guy right here. Oh dear goodness, that doesn't look good. <laughs> There's a giant gaping hole in the top of the armor. Maybe I should make a, mod oh, maybe I should make a modification about, oh, that's why that's there. I remember why that's there now. Ignore that. <laughs> So the first two pieces I got here are going to be the actual structure pieces, the primary ones from Microflash Delta. Now these are the two that were built using the jigsaw router combo method. So they're a little bit cleaner, look a little bit nicer, more photogenic of course, and they're going to get the paint jobs. Um, next up here, these are the backup pieces. So these are the ones that I was just working on a moment ago that were initially cut using only the jigsaw method and I just clean them up as best I can. They're a little ragged, not exactly the right size, a little bit thin in areas. But you know what, they're back up. If those things get trashed over here, I at least got something I can keep fighting with and that's the important part. So these four connection points are where the frame attaches to the, basically the rest of the robot. So I wanna make sure that these four points are all aligned across all the frames, at least with a bit of wiggle room they can be. Because that way, if that's the case, when I drill the main weapon shaft over here, I will know the weapon shaft will be aligned across all four pieces. So no matter which one I've got in the robot for whatever reason, I will have a more or less vertical weapon shaft. And that's the most important aspect of this robot, of course. Now it's time for the most important part, which is drilling the weapon shaft. Now since the four back bolt holes here are all aligned, even if technically this hole ends up being a tiny bit off where it should be relative to the actual design, it's not gonna be that big of an issue because it's relative to the attachment points in the frame and that's the most important thing. Weapon shaft's done. Now I'm gonna move on to the areas for the, basically the motor, what's a fancy term that I should know? The thing that spins around inside the motor <laughs> and the four motor mount holes. Frames are done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and weigh these, make sure they have the proper weight, or at least close enough to what the prototype frame over here has. Normally the scale is used for resin casting, hence the, <laughs> all the crap on it. Mold Max. 60, I believe, that's their pewter capable one. A lot of this is some variation of Smooth On 300 or 305, those are the two that I like. That is probably Mold Star 16 Fast, because I know that that's blue. Or wait, I think Mold Star 16 Fast is blue. Regardless, okay, let's. Sixty grams, sixty one. Also 61, that's awesomely consistent. Now these are the backup pieces, let's check these. That one's only 59, which makes sense. It's kinda gonna have a few chunks removed. That one's 58. Oh, well, okay. It would appear that the top and bottom structures were estimated to be 64 grams, so I'm coming in underweight by a few grams. I'll take it. So I'm waiting for some things to 3D print over there. What I'm gonna be doing is take apart Microflash Delta, 
figure out what bolts go where, and make a big diagram of it in this giant sketch pad I have right in front of me as effectively like a maintenance, I guess, manual for lack of a better phrase, so that between matches, repairs can go a little bit faster. There, I'm gonna move on to the rest of the parts and pretty much do a similar process where I'm gonna rebuild a lot of the parts, but to a little bit tighter spec because I can use this technique with the router on the plastic parts as well. And in fact, it's probably safer because plastic is a lot softer material and frankly, wood tools can cut most plastics pretty darn well. A great modern philosopher once said, we don't make mistakes, we make happy accidents. <laughs> And sometimes Bob Ross is definitely right. Let me show you a neat little example here. So Microflash Delta has two side structure pieces. They kind of go right here. I call them support ribs. Now, originally, for some weird quirk of the design, if I hold up the 3D printed piece here, the holes where it bolts to the frame were intentionally offset. They weren't perfectly in the middle, which meant these two pieces were not mirrors of each other and I had to have more copies of spare parts. However, when I went to buy the UHMW, for these parts, I thought I was buying a half inch thick piece of UHMW. So I got this piece here, which looks like half inch UHMW. However, it's actually a tiny bit thinner. It's something like, let me think the math in my head, like 15, 30 seconds, maybe a little bit smaller than that. And because of that, the final pieces were thinner. I was actually able to move the holes for the support bolts exactly in line in the middle, and I can now use the same piece here as well over there. When it comes to cutting out these small parts, the router trick I showed you with using a template doesn't work very well because they're so small. Plus, this part in particular doesn't have any bolts going through it to attach it to the UHMW. So for some quirk of chemistry, I'm not really sure why, I find that spray adhesive works very well for attaching this 3D printed part to the UHMW. Then I can use my bandsaw to cut this piece out. So now, when it comes to drilling these holes in the top and the back of the piece, I have this nifty little 3D printed template that is based on the um, actual 3D printed piece there that just kind of overlaps it and it gives me a guide for where I can drill both the holes. With these two pieces done, it's basically a process of continuing taking this robot apart one area at a time, building more spare pieces, kind of keeping track of what I've got and then eventually reassembling a completed frame that's ready to go. Actually, well, ready for painting before I actually, you know. A whole bunch of hand machine work later. I've got two piles of parts right here, and then a whole bunch of bolts. So let's assemble two frames of Micro Flash Delta. Prototype frame is back together. That's a good start here. Now I've got the final frame over here that needs to be assembled. Let's do that right now.
Now the downside of building this all by hand is a little bit of slop in your build process. And sometimes there's a lot of slop in your build process as I'm looking at right here. I'm not entirely sure where things went wrong, but this little bracket right here is off by about an eighth of an inch, which means the 3D printed template was off, which means my machine pieces that I machined with all the tools based on 3D printed templates are off. So I need to adjust this piece just a little bit to factor in this problem and go from there. Now, yeah, yeah, screw it. I'm just gonna get rid of those brackets. They save a few grams. I really don't think I need them because I've got four more bolts here. Granted, they also hold on the bumpers, which tend to get ripped off, but if I do things right, yeah, okay, screw it. I'm getting rid of those brackets. Problem solved. <laughs>